Yeah, that'll be great. All right, so if you're here, you maybe know that you're in the member engagement, um, like chops section, chapter ops section. So welcome, my name is Brendan Wall, um, and my co-host here is Annie Messia. Uh, we will be kind of taking you through this as a concept. Um, we're gonna make this very, very um, engaging, and so there's gonna be a lot of opportunity for us to brainstorm as a group. We really didn't want this to be like a lecture um, because really, as we're going to talk about, this is all going to be very chapter dependent. Um, so it's going to need to scale on your size. It's going to need to scale on um, how much funds you guys have and kind of your own chapter individual culture, which we'll talk about in a little bit here. Okay, so member engagement. First, we wanted to introduce ourselves. Um, like I said, my name is Brendan Wall. Um, I graduated from Illinois State University um, in 2020, I was in Mortarboard for two years. I was a secretary and selections chair and a president, so I am deeply involved with the um, selections process and I know how that goes. So if you have questions about that, even if you're in a different region than mine, you're more than welcome to ask. Um, I'm a cat dad, that's my cat Mochi. He may or may not make an appearance during this presentation. <laughs> um, I'm currently at I Iowa State University, I'm doing a PhD program in organic chemistry. And the top there is a notional image of some uh, peptides. I do a lot of protein and peptide um, modifications. So if you're interested in doing science research, let me know. Um, PM me, text me, I'm happy to talk. Um, this is a picture of me with Nobel laureate and DEI advocate, Dr. Carolyn Bertozzi. She uh, just got the Nobel Prize in chemistry actually this past year. And I got to meet her and she's super cool. Um, I got to have a beer with her at a conference like literally for three or four days ago. So that was an amazing experience. This summer I went to the Taylor Swift concert in Chicago. Um, I did get tickets for that. That was an awesome, awesome experience. Very lucky. And this is a picture of me and my boyfriend um, on a rail explorers trip. You kind of like essentially pedal down a, uh, a very scenic route of the um, this historic railroad that's no longer operative with real trains, but it's really cool. And that was last summer. So I'll go ahead and send it over to Annie. Well, hey, y'all. Um, my name is Annie. Brendan and I both have pictures from the Taylor Swift concert, which I think is fantastic. I went to night two in Atlanta um, with my best friend and actually VP of Mortarboard from last year at the Sally Stedman Azalea chapter, where I was both a secretary and then a chapter president. Um, we also won the Ruth Lover Mount Chapter Excellence Award last year, um, which I love to plug because I'm very proud of my chapter. And um, we did a spin class together as a chapter, which fun fact, I got a wasp sting and I'm very allergic to wasps. So I actually did not participate, sadly, but I got to take these fun photos of everyone. Um, I am starting my grad program in clinical and mental health counseling at South to be a counselor, hopefully for children and adolescents. Um, I have some fun pictures with my friends and we call this photo Sally and the girls because it's Dr. Sally Sedman um, with uh, most of our exec board, which is mostly women. And then also I hope y'all see how excited I am both to see dogs, but also to see y'all at our session. And we're just so ready to jump in to talk about member engagement. All right, so we're gonna just kind of jump into it because we wanna leave plenty of time for discussion. Um, so we want to talk about kind of how um, Annie and I decided to engage members when we were the presidents of our chapter and involved um, in mortar board um, as undergrads. Um, so there's kind of three main points we want to, you know, have you guys take away from this uh, when you think about how do I effectively engage the members of my chapter. First is feasibility. Um, we want you to consider the cost and the size of the events you plan, right? If you plan something that is going to require, you know, maybe more people in your chapter to be involved than, you know, you consistently have showing up to meetings, that's going to be an issue, right? Um, consider how much it's going to cost. You don't want to spend all of your money on one event at the very beginning, and then you're not really able to do anything for the rest of the year, and then you're not really having much um, consistent member engagement. Um, we recommend incorporating engagement of the members um, that are not in executive board roles. Um, so historically, um, some people will have like committees that'll actually take on, like if you have one big event that you do, 
Um, bigger um, programs will have a committee of their non-executive board members still part of that and help plan those events. And that can actually be a really powerful way to engage people because sometimes you'll see really um, successful chapters that are mostly executive board driven and there's really um, limited involvement from the non-executive board members. Uh, next is incentives. And so um, tracking member involvement and attendance. This can be something you give to a secretary um, as a job, or it can be something that you have someone who's in charge of maintaining and tracking uh, member attendance and member involvement. This can be a non-executive board position. It doesn't need to necessarily be someone in your executive board doing this. Um, but this can be really great because then you can reward members who do stay involved um, with regalia or awards at the end of the year. So you could have a most valuable mortar board, like an MVMB type award, or you can have potentially just, um, we had a like a credit, like an hours, like as long as you made it to so many events um, or were stayed th this involved with um, the chapter through the year, you were eligible to get regalia um, that we purchased for you or purchased at a discount. And I'm sure mortar board will bring this up again sometime throughout the conference if they haven't, but there is regalia. Um, that is available for purchase for your chapter so that you guys can wear and show your mortarboard pride. It's like stoles or um, little medals, uh, and they're available through the mortarboard shop, and it'll be talked about later in May, I'm sure. Thank you, Nathan, for putting that in the chat. If you want to go see what it looks like, you can see it there. Um, it's got the new logo on it and everything. It looks great. Um, third, we want to talk about is variety. Um, so partner with other organizations and student, and maybe the student government on your campus. Present a variety of options. Um, I always recommend trying to have like one event for each of the like pillars of mortarboard or ideals of mortarboard where you're having scholarship related events, a leadership, and maybe a service related event. And by doing that, you kind of give people who maybe aren't interested in, not that they're not interested, but like aren't, aren't available or can't do some things to be able to be involved in the chapter in some way. Um, and then finally, involve your members in planning the events. Um, so this is my biggest recommendation. I think the most successful chapters um, don't have one person who makes the cap. So if you haven't heard about it yet, the chapter action plan, you'll hear about it shortly, I'm sure. Um, it is essentially kind of your roadmap for how you plan your chapter this year and the goals that you want to set for your chapter. Um, involve everyone in the entire team on that. Involve your entire chapter. I think our first meeting back, we sat down and we said, here's what we need to submit um, as our plan. How do we as a chapter want to approach this? Not me as the president alone and not maybe me and my two people on the executive board. Um, if you in involve everyone in planning, they're going to be more invested in attending the events because they helped plan them. Uh, so this is kind of our three main takeaways. Uh, we hope that uh, we can use this kind of as like a guideline um, when we go into our small group discussions, which I'll throw it over to Annie. Ooh. I was muted. I'm yep. sorry. I'm trying my best. I feel like I'm a boomer with um, technology sometimes, so please bear with me. But um, so um, with our brainstorming session, we have kind of these three questions that we're asking. Are there any previous events that you plan to continue? from last year's chapter, what are ideas you would like advice on? And also how has your chapter previously encouraged member engagement? So that can be anything like buying regalia. And I've heard that in other sessions that other chapters buy regalia for their members. Um, I know Arizona State takes their members to Vegas and they pay for some of them if they get so many points and stuff. So we're gonna try the whiteboard feature on Zoom. So maybe we can all type at the same time. Um, so we'll stop our screen share so you won't see our lovely PowerPoint, so I'm sorry, um, but I hope this works. Okay, again, Boomer. Um, I think it should be loading. If you've never used the whiteboard before, um, you can press N and that gives you a sticky note. You can use a text box. So we have these three separate areas, um, engagement events or chapters already done. Um, events and ideas that you would like advice on, like you're trying to rebuild your chapter, what do I even do? Um, and then also structure. So do you have a tracker? Do you have a planner? Does your secretary do it? Um, if you could, I can still see the chat. So if this doesn't work at all, we can just drop things in the chat. Um, and Brendan and I will be looking at all of these things and we can kind of brainstorm together. We also have a little PowerPoint slide of feasibility, ID, and incentivization there. Just, you know, the three points that we were kind of thinking of. 
does this make sense to everyone what we're doing? So you can press T for text and for sticky note, and you can essentially um, put information into these three categories. Or you can draw, I don't know <laughs> if someone's figured out how to draw things. If this is a nightmare, we can also switch to doing it on um, PowerPoint, but we did wanna, we weren't sure how many people were gonna be in our session. So with 40 people, this is like a lot more than I intended, but um, <laughs> it looks a little insane yeah. right now. Yeah, and also if you want to drop the chat, maybe or something, if that's easier for you, I'll talk about that together too. And if you want to unmute and talk about something too, we really want this to be as collaborative as possible. Uh, where do we access this? Did you catch that, Annie? I heard something about access. Zoom cut up a little bit. If you could restate that or maybe drop it in the chat. Yeah, just kind of like cut out on the sound there for a minute. Yeah, how do we? If you want to drop in your chat your question, because I could not hear you either. Okay, so the ideas you would like to have advice on the how to balance member schedules. I know for us, we would try to set stuff up really early um, to try to get on member schedules first. Because in my mind, if we're first, then sorry, other organizations, we did it before you, you have to bend us, not the other way around. Um, and also like maybe doing a shared Google Calendar. I love my Google Calendar. Um, so maybe putting your events on theirs too would be really helpful. I know our exec board really appreciated that when we introduced that. Um, Brendan, did you have any advice for that? Mm, I don't think so. Can you restate the question? Sorry, I'm trying to uh, collect some of these ideas and I'm going to put them in a Google Doc as well so that we have this and we can maybe send it out at the end of the session here so that people have like some ideas on events and stuff like that. So can you restate what the question was? So the question was how to balance member schedules and deadlines with fun events. I think that's a really good question. Um, I think it's going to be it's going to be really dependent on what kind of school you're at. If you're at a really small school, we know that there's still a ton of student organizations, but there's also a lot less students who are involved in just one. So I know at you know small PUIs, it can be like you're in five different things and you're a main member in all five of those organizations because there's only 12 to 100 students on the campus. Um, at large institutions, I feel like maybe there's a little more opportunity. People are maybe only in like one or two things. Um, so adding mortarboard to their plate is a lot easier. So I do think that that will be school dependent, but the best thing, like you said, getting your events out early and pre-planning. And I think this is, again, I'm gonna harp on the point, planning as a group and not um, dictating what the events will be, um, you'll find will be a lot more effective at getting people to actually care about what mortarboard is doing. Um, I mean, it, think about it yourself. If you were in an, a group and you wouldn't want to go to events that you were told that you had to go to, you'd want to go to events that you helped plan. Um, so that's my biggest success story there is that we did that when I started as president and I think it went really well and we had pretty outstanding engagement that year. I also think um, what Brendan was saying, like really pull your chapter. Like we have a membership retreat at the beginning of the year. Um, and that way we can hear from our members about what speakers do they want at our meetings? What type of events do they like to do? We had a long standing event at South Alabama that a lot of chapters do called um, last lecture where someone would come and pretend that it was their last lecture ever, but, and give whatever they would want to like leave the audience with. Like one year it was about music and how music has changed their life. But we realized that our attendance was not great. We were inviting really high up people at our university and it was not making our chapter look good to have only 10 people show up for a very like highly publicized thing um, that these people wished more people were there to hear them. So yeah, so we decided to stop that and try something new and try something different. So I think making sure you're not married to anything, like every year is different, every group is different since we're all seniors. So really listen to your members. Um, another question, how many events per semester? 
I know there's a lot of good advice in the chat as well, so make sure you all are reading that. Um, but I think events per semester is really up to you. Um, Michaela, I think she's in here. Um, I've taken a ton of advice from her over the years because she was president at Texas Tech and they do the idea of choose your own adventure. So you can have a ton of events and then um, members can pick which ones they want to go to. That does yield sometimes less member engagement because you have less people going to each event since you have so many. So maybe if you have a smaller chapter, like Texas Tech is pretty large, um, maybe do fewer events. You get higher engagement from your entire group. Um, I know cost can be different for different size chapters. So maybe you have a really wealthy chapter, but you are smaller. So you can do things like go to dinner. Um, you can pay for all of your group's dinner. But if you have a very big chapter, even if you are wealthy and have a lot of funds, that's not going to work very well because you can't pay for 50 people's dinner. Um, you would run through all your money and that would not be good. Um, another question, I'm kind of sticking to the questions. Um, so I know Brendan is compiling engagements that people already do. So he'll send that as I did some resources. Wanna, I did want to add one thing um, in regards to mm -hmm. how many events per semester. Um, yeah. I really think that it's not going to be even right? Um, your most important task in the spring, and I don't know how much this has been emphasized yet, but is really going to be focusing on selection and getting the next class of mortarboards. You most people are in mortarboard for one year, um, meaning you really have one year to focus on, you know, uh, all of these things you want to do. And if I were you, my biggest, you know, thing I say to all my students is like focus on the fall being where you do the majority of your big events and what you want to do and maybe do one or two in the spring but really keep it light because in the spring you might be applying to med school or grad school or looking for a job or you know starting an internship or if you might be if you're a teacher you're doing student teaching I mean that's all going to be on your plate along with graduating and mortar board you need to you know keep some time for yourself and focus on um like priorities of selection over, you know, overwhelming yourself with like five events in the spring plus the selection process, which is um, not a daunting task, but it is like a non, you know, um, trivial task as well. It's going to be, require some work from your entire chapter. Um, and it's really important if you didn't have a good transition from your past chapter, uh, this is an opportunity to write that and um, have a great transition this year. So uh, emphasize the amount of time and start early on that. And by doing that, I think you need to kind of focus on what events you want to do in the fall, which means when you get to, to get to campus, planning your events as soon as you get there, I think is it within like a few weeks um, is really a really good strategy to start the semester on the right foot. And kind of piggybacking off of what Brendan's saying, as well as what Nathan put in the chat about Mortarboard Week, we have our selection around the time of Mortarboard Week. So um, right when ours are due, it's usually the end of Mortarboard Week. So we're A, pushing more board really hard because it's more board week and B, getting our name out. So we're kind of doing a two for one. So that way we're not doing a ton of events and a busy time of selection as well as like midterms. And I just feel like second semester really catches up to you in college as a collegiate member. That's how I felt. Um, moving on to another question of how to encourage Greek life members to participate more. Um, what's something that I see in our chapter is we at South Alabama and other people can chime in about their chapters, but we get specific Greek life organizations. Like we have a ton of CAIOs right now at South Alabama. Um, and during our selection, they talk about how great the CAIOs are. And that can be a good and a bad thing. Um, and so that's why A, you need to make sure that you you have members recuse themselves if they're too close to someone. Um, and B, just making sure everyone's like honest and confidential during everything. Um, but the way that we encourage Greek life members is having them and having them go to chapter. Like I would go to chapter with them and talk about our organization or talk about, um, we have scholarships that we give out. We give out $1,000 to one junior and then 600 to three freshmen at South Alabama. Um, and that was a great way to get our name out there to Greek life organizations um, and engage those members in a certain subsect or group. Brendan, I don't know if you have any experience with that either. I, we did have, like, our Greek life at Illinois State was, like, not necessarily as big, I would say, um, but I definitely think it's an opportunity to partner with other organizations. Um, if you can find, like, a cause, I know, like, a lot of Greek organizations have some kind of philanthropy. Um, if that philanthropy aligns with something your chapter is interested in, 
I think that's a great um, a great thing to like work with them on. I would also encourage you, the student government usually is always looking, I feel like, to partner with people for certain events, at least ours was. Um, so it's really an opportunity for partnership, I think. And I think like thinking about partnership, that is such a big thing that I don't think a lot of people think about or talk about. Um, one of my best friends was the president of the pre-health organization. So I went to her and said, hey, um, can we throw this big Friendsgiving with your organization and Mortarboard? And we did it. And we had about 200 people show up and it was not what we were expecting at all. It was way bigger and it was fantastic. And um, we were able to split costs. So it was another way that we were able to throw something really big without blowing our budget or their budget. Um, and so think about your friends, think about who you can network with, whether it be SGA, whether it be another club. I know the archeology span Society at South Alabama is really active and they do movie nights. Maybe we could do a movie night with them. Things like that, um, really thinking about your campus partnerships can get more members engaged and also be great outreach for different members that maybe you don't always touch or talk to. Um, I think member engagement, you can really partner with everything. I'm not gonna talk about fundraising here because that's not really what we're super focused on, but um, you can engage your members with efforts to like flower sales. I made great friends sitting at the flower sales booth at South Alabama and at both of our commencements and really make it a fun time. And I think that's how you get members to show up to stuff, um, incentivize them. So the, the incentive could be making a friend, having fun, but it could also be like having food, um, getting your regalia. Um, as college students, we're really busy, busier than ever in my opinion at this time in our lives and in our country's lives. Um, and so like, why do people want to show up? Why do they want to be there? And sometimes sorry you to make it worth their while. And I think having a great community can really make it worth their while and make it somewhere they want to go and want to be at. Um, when is mortar board week? I think that is on the website. It's Sometime March, in something. February. It is, it is the week of February 15th. Thanks y'all, yes. So start thinking about that now because um, planning as early as possible. And again, if you don't have a retreat, I would recommend creating a mortarboard retreat for your members because you could ask them things like that. Like, what do you want to do during mortarboard week? Maybe they really want to do a service project or maybe they really want to do some more outreach for selection, things, things in that nature. Um, how to partner with the student government. So I know for our campus, it was on their website, um, but also like most student governments have offices. So you can just walk in honestly and ask them, but usually I bet there's an email for the SGA president or the director in that way. Brendan, do you have any experience with that? Uh, can you ask, restate the question again? I do have a link for all of this. I'm sorry, I'm like doing double duty here. No, you're yeah. fantastic, Brendan. Um, how to partner with the student government association was a question. That's probably really um, school specific. Uh, if you have members who are part of SGA, that makes it really easy. Um, usually they'll, some student governments will give you funding for events, so you can look out for that. Um, I think, um, at least on my school, our student government uh, meetings were all open to the public. So even if you can't get a meeting with one of them, you could go to one of their events and then just wait after and try and see if there's an opportunity. Um, the amount of programming that your student government does, I think, is going to be also school specific. Some really operate as like a governing body and some really do want to engage the student body. So um, I think like pooling your funds, especially for your chapter with very little money, you can still do a lot of good events by like kind of, uh, you know, being like, we can bring our members, you can to the event, you can bring some financial assistance to the event and you can merge that with, you know, whatever or like, you know, organization on your campus is doing things. Um, and I think that's a really great way to engage. I have put in the chat a Word doc or a link to a Google Doc um, that is publicly available. So you can share this with your chapter, copy this link, however you want. Um, and it's basically got everything that we've talked about. It's got engagement events that people in, in the chat and on this board have put that they do. Um, and then I've also put some uh, ideas to encourage engagement basically. Um, and so if you guys want to take a look at that, use this, take it back with your chapter, use it for your brainstorming sessions that you do internally. Um, but at least this is kind of a starting point for helping you build uh, the cap. 
And so we have five more minutes. So I think we want to open this up if there's any people, one who wants to like raise their hand and ask any other questions about encouraging member engagement. We can talk about that and I can continue to add to the sheet as we chat. So retreat ideas. Um, I think for us, it really, A, someone mentioned this in a section coordinator advisor thing. Wherever you can book it, we had problems with booking room, honestly, for my retreat. So we were just like outsourcing to different places. But I think with that is cost. So we found a free place on our campus, um, the Archaeology Museum, actually, which was kind of interesting. And we just went through like the expectations from Order Board and then tried to do some team building. So you get your engagement early on and you get people that maybe don't know each other early on to become friends. So then you get that buy-in of them wanting to come to meetings, wanting to see someone they don't usually see um, and maybe do some different stuff. Like we had people draw on a note card and then we had people guess who drew it and just interesting things like that. Brendan, do you have retreat ideas? Um, our chapter was pretty small. I, so uh, at, at least at the time. Um, so our retreat, we actually, like, I think, we coupled it. We had everyone come over and like we baked a bunch of um, baked goods. And then we, the next day or like the following few days, we actually used those baked goods as part of a um, bake sale. So it doesn't have to be like, you know, something really complicated where you're like renting a room and doing like having a speaker come. Uh, you could, it, do, it can be, it doesn't have to be a day or two days if you don't want it to be, it can be a few hours. I think we watched like a few movies and made cookies and you know chocolate covered pretzels and then sold them and it's kind of like a dual function thing right it's a retreat get to know you we can talk about mortarboard talk about each other but also you can like use it as a fundraiser i don't know i think it's kind of a slick idea personally but um i'm biased it was my idea so <laughs> but yeah you know it can be easy it doesn't need to be complex and maybe you know you make the first event retreat like it doesn't need to be all day it can be just a few hours if you want and we even use retreat as a um, meeting credit and had to go to four out of seven meetings. And so we had much more attendance at the retreat than we usually would have because people wanting that meeting credit early on, and it was early on the calendar. So that was again, an incentive that we got people to get there. Do you have any other questions? I guess just like the main point and the main crux of member engagement is what a why do your members want to be engaged and how do you engage them and be like that buy-in i think that's where it all comes from is why are your members here what is the purpose of mortar board and how do you build that buy-in and it's different for every size chapter um and just every chapter school specific yeah, yeah. those are my I thoughts brendan I think like also there is something to be said about like after you build that buy in if there's people who aren't like involved in mortar board and you're you're going to have someone in your chapter who paid dues and just like doesn't show up. Spend the time have someone in your chapter spend the time to send them an email and reach out and find out why. Um, maybe they didn't know where it was maybe they didn't feel welcome um, or they just hadn't really got there is getting mixed signals crossed figure out why that is. Um, sometimes you'll find that there were just members who just kind of forgot about it and uh, forgot they were in mortar board. Um, it's a good opportunity to really increase your numbers too and keep people engaged. So I have someone who's in charge of like tracking that and maintaining that contact with uh, members who kind of slip away over, over time. So I think we got like one more minute here. So if there's any other questions, if not, I think we're returning or are we going on break? I cannot even remember now. Yeah, so our next session is our big group. We're going to do the t-shirt uh, vote. We're going to vote on the uh, design of the t-shirt. We're going to talk about some giveaways, um, the one that was announced yesterday, and I believe they'll be announcing a new one. Um, I think room one was uh, running a little bit behind, um, so you may have a couple minutes to get over there, but um, yeah, so uh, just we'll be in the main stage, and uh, you can join around in the next minute or so, and um, we'll... Uh, start when we start. All right. Thanks, everyone. I put that link back there in the chat if you need it again, but we'll see y'all in the main session.